all she wanted was a hug from her mum. She used to beg the staff to allow her to come home to her mum. I just want my mummy. In February, Lindsay's daughter Lauren took her own life. She was alone in a mental health hospital, 250 miles away from her home and her family. It was meant to be a temporary move. When she died, she had been there for nine months. As soon as I saw the phone ring, I knew. I, I just knew. In the weeks leading up, she was very let down. She said that she could see no way out and she was going to be held in that hospital forever. So this is the last picture that I've got of me and Lauren while she was alive. What was she like when you, when you saw her? She cried a lot. Um, she didn't want to leave. She followed me out of the ward. Um, clung to me so I couldn't move. Lauren was autistic, but was sectioned under the Mental Health Act after she was diagnosed with a personality disorder when she turned 18. She was in what's known as an out-of-area placement, sent from Dorset to Manchester because of the lack of local beds. Lindsay says not only was the hospital she was sent to not suitable for Lauren's needs, she wasn't even warned about the move. I woke up to a phone call from Lauren. Um, she was hysterical, crying her eyes out. And she said that some hospital transport was on its way to pick her up and she was being sent to Manchester. So I didn't even have the opportunity to go and say goodbye to her. Some days we'd spend all day on the phone to each other so I could calm her down. She was scared to death. Do you believe that the fact that Lauren was sent so far away and where she was sent contributed to her taking her own Absolutely. life? Absolutely. Absolutely. The government pledged to end inappropriate out-of-area mental health placements by 2021, but it never happened. Not all placements are recorded, but we know there were at least 660 inappropriate placements ongoing at the end of last year. That's more than 90% of all out-of-area moves. A placement is classed as inappropriate when it's made because of a lack of local beds. They cost the NHS at least £118 million last year. But these numbers don't even capture the true scale of the problem. NHS England only published data on out-of-area placements for patients who are over 18, and yet children too are being sent hundreds of miles from home, often with devastating results. She went in hardly self-harming and she came out and she is covered in scars. Her body is like, it's like she's like the walking wounded. Last year, when Claire's daughter Imogen needed inpatient care, the only bed available was in Bury near Manchester, a six and a half hour drive from their home in Kent. Imogen, who we've blurred here to protect her privacy, was at the time 13 years old. So I was just like, I had to, you know, I just kept saying, I'll be back, I'll be back, I'll be back, I'll be back in the morning, I'll be back in the morning, I promise I'll be back in the morning. So I went back up to Manchester, spent all of my savings on petrol, on Airbnbs. I thought she's never going to get better if she knows I'm not here. After five months, Imogen was discharged in October but Claire says there was no plan in place for her return back home and she's now so ill she doesn't leave her room. There was no cohesion and I feel here we are, what, five months on again and I've had to resign from my job, I'm her full-time carer, I've got no respite, she's still not taking any medication and I'm like, well, what was that? What was the point in that? Our life has fallen apart. Completely. <laughs> Claire's MP, Rosie Duffield, is now pushing for a debate on the issue in Parliament. It's really become urgent. We need the Health Secretary to look at this and to ring fence that mental health spending so that it is directed towards these services, not leaked to other emergency areas in the NHS. We really need this to be taken seriously. The government told us they missed the target for ending these placements because of the pandemic and said, we are investing an extra 2.3 billion per year to transform NHS mental health services by 2024 
meaning more people will be able to receive care as close to home as possible. But this is aimed at community care and not inpatient beds. The reality on the ground is that the system isn't working. So even though we're ha you know, we have expansion of community services, there are areas and so many areas across the country that don't have enough inpatient beds. The Royal College of Psychiatrists say the only answer is funding to replace mental health beds that have been cut by 70% in the last 30 years. What is the risk to patients, to the mental health system as a whole, if we don't get a handle on this? Sending people away, miles away for their treatment is simply unacceptable. It's devastating for their mental health. Uh, and I use the word devastating because it is truly devastating for them and for their families. Lily's represent hope for us. So she sent me this. For Lindsay, memories and pictures are now all she has left. If the government had stuck to their plan, then we would still have Lauren and other families might still have their children. She still hopes these placements will be stopped, even though any change comes too late for Lauren. Katie Barnfield, Sky News.